Welcome gamers to Mini Paints. I'm Brian and I'm here to show you some more of my work. All right, well, let's let's start it off with the big boys, right? Immediately as the core set was released, Hulk and Modoc were released as separate expansions to the game. Um, I believe the same weekend. Uh, maybe like a couple weeks later, I don't remember. But they were available almost immediately to play. So we've got a Modoc and we've got a Hulk. Let's start with Hulk first. And I've got a little better camera setup this time than last time. Uh, we were just using the GoPro last time. This time we've got a Sony Handycam that's about seven years old. We'll see how it does. It seems to focus pretty well at this range. I did kind of a zenithal thing. There's a little bit of like a bluish purplish underpainting. Like I originally painted him almost a blue purple entire model and then sprayed, and I do this a lot of my models, sprayed a white from above or like a, a light gray maybe. That allows the purple to sort of stay in the recesses from underneath. You can see in the various recesses, abdomen, biceps, pectorals, etc. That there's some purple in there. Started with that, sprayed up some greens, kind of transparent greens. Most greens are pretty transparent paints, like the pigments are actually, you know, somewhat transparent. They kind of act as a filter usually for what's below them. Built the white over the purple, then put the greens on, to clarify. Then built some more white on top of the greens in kind of smaller areas, then greens again. And kind of worked up to like a yellowy green. And I went in just to add a little visual interest, added these kind of scars to them, which I'm, I'm reasonably happy with, I think. Uh, I might go back and add some like, maybe like little drips of like blood or something uh, from a couple of them. I think it's kind of cool. Sometimes you gotta, when you have a large surface area like this, you, you need to necessarily like build some extra visual interest in the model when there's this much of kind of the same color and kind of an area that there's not a lot of sculpted detail other than the muscle itself. So usually with like big muscly models, I'll add some like scarring or, you know, something like that to just kind of make it a little exciting. And that's Hulk. Oh, one other note about Hulk. And this is a note about a few other miniatures too. Uh, I am a huge fan of Marvel Crisis Protocol miniatures. I think they're incredibly fun to paint. I think they're super awesome sculpts. The cardinal rule is like, you never have the head facing down. Um, it's kind of just a sculpting rule in general. Like usually you'll notice looking at good sculpture, the chin's up. It's just human nature, you want to see the entirety of the face, I think. So I think Hulk looks down a little too much, long story short. And a few other models do as well. Uh, Hela, notably, does that as well. And, and I fixed it, fixed it, quote unquote, to my to my taste. I'm not saying that it was wrong, but you know, I made it more the way I wanted it. On Hulk, I just lifted his front foot by building up debris underneath it. That was enough to get him. And it also just kind of, you know, gives a cool, like you smash the ground kind of look. But that gives him a little bit more of an upward visual presence. So easy enough, just to stick some stuff under his feet. Bam, boom, done. That's the Hulk, awesome model. Uh, talking about another awesome model and probably like the model that I think most people who don't play this game actually are like excites them the most, weirdly enough, is uh, this crazy Modoc man. Modoc is, is a, this is like an iconic miniature for this game. I think if anybody really said like, what's the miniature that everybody thinks of when they think of this game, this is it. He's just super unique. It's basically like painting a bust. You can do so many different things with the flesh tones on the face. I made mine kind of a corpsey looking, you know, sort of dude, but you could have, I mean, there people paint it. You put so much extra detail on the face. The, the pupils are as big as like, or, you know, I should say the eyes are as like as big as like the heads on certain models. So there's tons, like you can actually literally paint an iris on there if you want. He's a really cool model, and he's just such a, a corny, like, meme of a guy. I mean, he's flying around in his, like, doom wheelchair, and he, he's absolutely a, a, a just a demon of a model in the game. Like, he just crushes everybody. He's so good. So this was, like, one of my first forays into, like, using an airbrush to do a uh, non-metallic metal kind of gold-ish, we'll call it. Um, I don't know. I guess that's gold. Um, and it came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. You know, that laid in the initial blends. Uh, one thing that I struggle with is my brush. Sometimes I get a little bit of this pebbling, which is unfortunate. Um, but it is what it is. I don't have the money to buy like a bunch of fancier brushes. 
But I went in and I laid in, you know, the point highlights that are very important for non-metallic metal. You know, all those little edges. Built up those little nice little glints. Yeah. Really happy with this dude. And it's it's not quite the stock scheme, so, which is nice. I, I, I kind of try to move away from the stock schemes a little bit with my models. I really, really love the Black Panther model. And I, uh, the only thing I didn't really love about him is his like sort of lack of height uh, because of his pose, not because the model itself is short. So I built him up with some rubble. And I tried to do some airbrushing where I built up some like modulation on the muscles and stuff. And it kind of just didn't really bring up as much light as I would have hoped. Which is fine. The problem is though, um, I lost a lot as I did, did that airbrushing, I lost some of those lines. So I had to go back and like really carefully pick these lines out. It was a real pain in the ass. Uh, this is, this goes to a, a, the, probably my only complaint about these miniatures is at times that the small kind of line details are very shallow and primer can fill them in or you can kind of lose them on a dark paint scheme and it's hard to find them sometimes. Um, so I kind of went in and just sort of built some like glowy they're, they're not really they don't glow too much but um he's a model i'd probably like to do another one of this one's decent i built you know i got some warm tones in in the, in the shadows and stuff like there's some stuff that's cool about him but ultimately not my favorite of my paint jobs um but you know solid take it uh killmonger was another one where i was like uh i don't really like when i saw that model pictures of him well, he's fine. I, you know, it, it wasn't like, oh, that, that's garbage or anything. Uh, but then I got it in my hands and I, I really like it. And it, it's that same kind of statuesque sort of paint job, or uh, excuse me, same kind of statuesque sculpt of like a Zemo or some of the other ones at Danvers. It's just got kind of a really great sort of classical pose. I did all my vibranium stuff in like a bluey glow. So that's kind of in Brian's world, that's how what vibranium looks like. That's how I differentiate the vibranium weapons from other stuff. And that's Killmonger. These were both, I just kind of winged this scheme and it, it's a very alternate scheme. So I kind of just went for something. I was like, this is feasible. And you know, worked in a little face paint and stuff. Uh, Shuri is a very small model, a lot of finicky little details. So I think the technical, like the painting on this is not my best by any stretch. But I think the scheme is actually pretty effective. And I do like the way her her vibranium panther gauntlets came out, kind of in line with the other vibranium weapons like we talked about before. And then Okoye, I'm just pretty happy with. I think she came out pretty awesome. Spear looks cool. Went some pretty extreme highlighting on the black of the shaft. Um, did some, um, some like dotted paint on her head. And this is definitely unique. like, you know, whenever I post these again, I get kind of like, oh, that's a really cool alt scheme, you know? Uh, what comic is that from? And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> but you thought it was from a comic, so mission accomplished. I'm close enough to reality that I got away with it. Uh, let's talk about unaffiliated monsters. I call them monsters just because they're all pretty good in the game. Let's talk about the guy who's the least monstrous though, as this dude. So Winter Soldier, I kind of painted, I think my favorite parts of him are the arm and his gun. The gun, I kind of tried to do that Angel Geraldes sort of streaky metallic. And I am not nearly as skilled at rendering as that dude. And I don't have the kind of time that that dude has to professionally paint miniatures. But I think it came out pretty solid. And I think the scheme is, is a little more interesting with the green added to it. But yeah, that's old Bucky. Now let's talk about monsters. This dude, I'm actually really happy with the black on this guy. It's got really subtle. I hope the camera picks it up. Sometimes they don't. It's got some purple in it. I did some like most of the modulation is via an airbrush and just a few like real soft, like final highlights with a brush. It's probably the best airbrush blending I've ever done. And yeah, I mean, that's the majority of the model, right? He's got a, you know, a crazy mouth and tongue. Um, definitely see, try to get some good transitions on the teeth. Tongue, you know, it's fun to paint, right? It's got some purples and 
uh, magenta, you, you mix a little yellow, you white into that magenta to highlight it, it pops real nice. And that's about it. Last, definitely not least, and arguably the most monstrous of the, the monstrous unaffiliated guys we're talking about here. This is Vision, and this is probably my favorite, favorite, like, you know, like design of the character's suit and stuff. I like his fluff. I like how he, he's just like this android who is like sort of a very moral man and like has this sort of just complexity to him. I love it. You can like face through stuff and fly and I don't know. He's just so, he's so cool. And I really went uh, balls out on the painting with him. I, I had spent a lot more time on him uh, rendering the, the, like the magentas and the greens. This magenta, I did a bunch of filtering where I like kind of built it up from like magenta, like dark purple to white. And then I washed it with like, not even a wash, sorry. I did like a filter, like a like a glaze, like a really thinned out transparent red, just like a super thin layer, let it dry. Kind of, and then it kind of applies a filter of the color, built it up again, did that a couple times. Um, it's got just a ton of visual depth that uh, we'll see if it comes through on the camera or not. But um, it's just great. I'm really happy with it. Uh, cloak and stuff, it's kind of a neon -y green. Did a little like, you know, bright blue kind of energy glow on his knee where he's coming through. Uh, but yeah, just an absolute monster on the table. Sick miniature. Just, I don't know, just I'm super happy to put him on the table and I, he's the model I often just pull out of my case and stare at. Uh, just, just really happy with him. Now last and certainly not least, <laughs> Uh, maybe the best affiliation right now. I, I don't know. It's it's hard to make declarations about miniature game power level because this isn't League of Legends. We don't play 10,000 games a day to figure these these sort of balance things out. But by my estimation, a very strong allegiance. I'm gonna talk about Asgard, and this we'll, we'll say this is the least of Asgard. Uh, I like the model a lot. It's a sculpt that I didn't really appreciate in pictures, but kind of like Killmonger. Once I got it in my hands, it, it just has more visual presence in person. Um, Valk is very tall, actually, like shockingly tall. Uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense, uh, you know, by the story, but I mean, she, she's significantly taller than Killmonger. She's just a big model. And I kept the, the suit and stuff very uh, simple. Did some non-metallic airbrush stuff with the swords that I think worked pretty well. Got a nice little glow to them, added a little, you know, edge highlights with the brush and the, the center highlights and such. Did non-metallic gold on the handles and the van, van braces, bracelets, fancy bracelets. And then the cloak, I did kind of like the vision technique, a base color, spraying some white with the airbrush, and then by hand, filter it with a really transparent blue. And did that a couple times, and it just, it kind of gives it this like ethereal, like a, like a like a sheeny fabric and i did the same thing to thor's cloak which i'll show you in a sec so just kind of a, a cool different thing for my asgard that i really i'm happy with i did thor and valk's flesh tones at the same time uh, my buddy Polly, who is an awesome painter and plays in our local meta he was talking about um a specific way of painting the flesh and i kind of tried to copy i should say like emulate what he did his stuff's smoother than mine. I think I push values harder than he does, but his stuff is blended much better than mine. I'm really happy with the flesh tones on like this arm. I guess it's both arms. <laughs> he has two arms and a face. They both have flesh on them. So happy with all that. The other thing I, I, I really like on, the way that came out on him is the non-metallic metal. I did the gold on, you know, these things, his fancy bracelets and uh, the stuff around his waist. He's a super imposing, awesome model. And uh, the cloak, same deal as Valk. Just like painted by hand a, a dark red. Sprayed in whites on the lights. So soft white area, like, you know, like here, 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 a little bit here, a little bit here. Had to be careful with masking everything off. You know, it didn't try to like, kind of cut some corners and not mask the entire model off to do it. Um, so I did some of it by hand. But then after that, juiced it, glazed it, filtered it, whatever you want to call it. Took a real, took a red and thinned it on the palette to be like water thin, and then just apply a water thin layer that you don't let pool. 
let it dry, do it again. There you go. Um, just has a cool presence to it. Did not apply any kind of actual like edge highlights or anything to it. Same thing with Valk, just left it alone and I was pretty happy with the, the end result. Has a fabric look to it. Cause this, this fabric, both of their cloaks don't really have hard creases in them. That's usually where you hit that like raw, sh like sharp edge highlight. They don't really have that. So it kind of, I think this works pretty well. I think on a cloak that's like Loki's, a little different, I'll show you that in a second. I think you have to hit those with the, the down the edge, kind of edge highlight. I even like like brushes when I'm not painting. <laughs> all right, so here's Loki. Asgard is the most recent stuff I painted and uh, I am happy with all of it. I'm, I'm actually really stoked with the way he came out. The green, which is the majority of the model, I sprayed sort of a blue, did the airbrush white, shot the green over the white, built up the layers, hand edge highlighted all these hard edges of cloak, Gave him, you know, some of the creases and things up top, same stuff. But, you know, when you airbrush, you gotta sometimes fix, like, oh, I blew out a shade, I gotta go and put it in there by hand, like right here and right here, okay, great. You know, like you gotta, it's not magic. Um, I mean, it's magic for some people, it's not magic for me. <laughs> uh, but that's it, that's how you get there. And then non-metallic gold, this was really hard because there's just a ton of little scales in here. I'm really happy with the way this OSL came out. And then the matching ice, Zoom is what that is, that he's about to shoot at somebody. That's, that's my low key. Just a height comparison. She big and he's not. <laughs> I assume that's part of the story. And then the model I, I most recently painted, in fact, she's not even varnished yet, so you can see her base is, like, the edge of her base is really shiny. That'll go away once I varnish it. Um, this is my Hella. I did a pure, just, like, one color, like, green to white, like, through, through a greenish yellow to white blend on, like, everything. And then I went back in and painstakingly painted all this, like, bandy parts of her suit. And then gave them kind of a two-stage sort of a it's not really a metallic but it probably ends up kind of looking metallic just because of how stark the final highlights are gave her a little purple glow on her eyeballs and i was just perfectly fine with it right there i thought about adding more colors but there's just something kind of cool about her she's almost like built out of energy she's awesome she's covered in green energy fire so she's just made of green energy fire in uh, in my world see too just a little bit I wish it was it showed a little more but purple under under painting that was the, the first layer that went down on this model the whole model was purple you can see it definitely on the inside of the cloak and a few other areas like that but it does show through in spots again uh, my airbrush gave me some pebbling it's all right I'll live with it but I wish it didn't happen and one day I'll buy better hardware um, as I, you know, do more airbrushing. And that's the whole game. So that's that's every model that's been released uh, now, because we went through, in episode one, we went through the core set, the core 10 models. And then we've got what, two, six, 10, 13 more, 23. So that's every model that's been released, except these guys, which are next. Now, I am not going to do anything with these on this particular video, but I am going to record a video of painting these guys. I think I'm probably gonna do a format like a time-lapse because watching somebody paint is pretty boring, frankly. It just takes, there's just not enough action in it. Uh, so a time-lapse with like a voiceover is probably the way I'll do that. Um, or at least like edit it up where I'll show you maybe a few like, here's me applying some highlights and then it speeds up and shows whatever, and you know, base coat moves on to the next thing. These are. These are such awesome sculpts. I mean, look at this, look at this rocket. And that's all I got to talk about for Marvel Crisis Protocol. I do have a, a one other thing on my painting table that I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm gonna record painting. I'll probably just show them finished next time. Uh, and this is for a science fiction project. <laughs> so these are infinity models, which I think are 
incredible. Always incredible. Um, I wish they were bigger. Now that I've been painting Marvel stuff, I would like oh, every other model. I just wish was bigger, frankly. Um, but they are. These are. This is the Yuching starter set. Uh, it came from Operation Red Veil, which is a starter pack that comes with Yuching and Hakazlam. Uh, it comes with, I believe, basically the contents of their normal starter sets, and then like a couple extra models. Uh, I think there's a few other models I haven't assembled yet, are not here and present, but this is what I'm going to start with. So we don't play Infinity, and uh, I think it's a fine game, and it's it, no indictment on that game, just not for us. Uh, it's a, a game that tons of people play and really enjoy it. But what we've been trying to figure out is how to use all these cool sci-fi models that are out there, like Infinity and other ranges, um, in it, in some kind of tabletop game. It's fun to set up sci-fi terrain and do sci-fi things. So that's what we're trying to do here with these. And all these are just prime black. And then I did a little zenithal work with the airbrush, just zenithal and white over certain areas that are gonna be some yet to be determined color. Not sure yet. I don't think I'm gonna do them in that orange. That's the stock color. Uh, this is a really awesome like ninja model, the bow. These are, I think they're called Zanshi, and they're like the Lion Infantry. They're just pretty kind of basic, but they're cool sculpts. A couple female models and the male model. Mostly, I love these like big power armor bros, <laughs> of course, right? They're, they're really sick. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at my models. Uh, now that we're all cut up, we're gonna actually paint on on video which is going to be great i'm really excited about it i think we've got a camera set up that should be able to focus close enough to actually you know effectively see what i'm painting thanks for watching and we will see you next time and thank you so much for watching another mini fights video we really appreciate you enjoying our content please like and subscribe maybe throw a little beer money at our patreon maybe we'll be able to buy some new camera equipment yeah, or beer <laughs> And we will see you in the next video. Thanks.